What is up guys, welcome back to another Geek of What video and today I'm back with an $800 gaming PC build for 2018. If you're looking for an epic 1080p and even 1440p build, this is where it's at, at an $800 budget. I'll leave links to all the parts mentioned below, but before that let's jump into some performance figures so you can see what kind of experience you can be expecting from this system. At 1080p you're looking high in ultra settings, well over that 60 frames per second mark, and head down to older titles such as CSGO, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, at those kind of games you're looking 1440p, medium and high settings, over 100 frames per second in some scenarios, which is just nuts. But now though let's jump into the parts I chose for this build and why, and kick it off as always with the CPU. AMD's Ryzen 5 1400 seemed like the perfect choice for today's PC build. This quad core chip sits at the bottom of AMD's Ryzen 5 lineup, but don't be fooled, it's certainly no slouch. With a base clock of 3.2 and boost clock of 3.4 GHz, it's really impressive and also features AMD's simulta simultaneous multitasking, sorry, meaning you get 8 threads and 4 cores, making this a decent contender for a bit of live streaming if you wanted to on the side. I personally don't see any point in heading up uh, to the next model in the lineup, the 1500X, as it's simply an overclocked 1400 CPU, which you can do all yourself and I'll get onto in a moment's time. For the motherboard in today's build, I selected Asus's Prime B350M-E. Now there's a few reasons for this. First is the chipset. The B350 chipset is the one but highest end chipset that AMD motherboards offer and actually supports overclocking. Unlike Intel who require you to buy the top top end chipset motherboards that could set you back 130, 150 or 200 hundred dollars AMD allow overclocking on the cheaper motherboards which is a big win for you the consumer. It allows you to get free performance essentially out of your CPU with good leverage even on the stock cooler uh, seamlessly and easily through one click in the motherboard BIOS. This motherboard also boasts two RAM DIMM slots with dual channel memory and decent upgrade paths as well as PCIe 3.0 and an M.2 slot uh, which supports super fast storage uh, SSD drives which would be a great upgrade later on down the line. Front panel and rear panel USB 3 alongside a couple of red light up areas and a sleek design that fits perfectly in today's build make this a great choice. Oh and it's very affordable. For the RAM in today's build, I went for an 8GB DIMM, of course there's Vengeance LPX. This 2666MHz clocked kit uh, is really nice, it comes in fairly affordable as well when compared to other uh, RAM pricing at the moment. RAM prices, like the prices of graphics cards, have shot up in recent years, and whilst it really is a shame, I don't see any signs of this going down really anytime soon. This RAM's a great choice, I've owned 32 gigs of this DDR4 stuff, way back when I built my X99 build when that came out and have not had a single problem with it since. You've got overclocking leverage, it looks good, and a sleek black design, and uh, in six or 12 months time, if you wanna get some more performance, just grab another uh, identical stick, shove it in next to it, and you've got 16 gigs of RAM for a future-proofed system. For the storage in this build, I selected a hard drive. Now I know what you're thinking, James, an $800 gaming PC with a hard drive, and a one terabyte hard drive at that. Why? Now, cryptocurrency mining has gone massive over uh, recent months, even years, I suppose you could say, and that has caused the prices of graphics cards to increase massively. And that means if you want a good gaming experience, if gaming is what you're after, which you have to make sacrifices in other areas to stick to a decent budget. You can go and pick up an SSD right now or in six months time as an upgrade to this build, no problem. However, it's gonna set you back $150 and there just isn't that leverage in this build at the moment given current market conditions. A one terabyte Seagate hard drive is gonna work absolutely fine and as long as you don't have too much stuff opening at startup or your desktop isn't too clogged with icons, Windows 10 is actually fairly well optimized for use with slower hard drives. Not to mention you get all that mass storage capacity and the 7200 RPM speed is as fast as your mainstream consumer hard drives tend to get. It's also super affordable and just is gonna work really nicely and is available like all the other parts aside from the GPU on Amazon Prime for super fast shipping. Links as always are in the description below. 
For the graphics card in today's build, I selected Asus's Strix GTX 1060 6GB uh, model. Now, at the current time, there is a bit of a conundrum to be had with graphics card pricing and stock availability. This is due, of course, to the high demand for graphics cards because of cryptocurrency mining, whereby GPUs can be used to mine said cryptocurrencies. In short, I'll put links in the description below and also try to keep as up to date as possible with pricing, but any 1060 you can find, new or used, is going to serve you well. Other options that I quite like are MSI's Black and Red 1060, the Gamer Next model. It looks really, really nice, but as I said, any 1060 that's a good deal, just go for it. For the penultimate part in today's build, this is a new entry into my PC build series and a huge thanks goes out to Corsair for sending this case over at my request. It's their new Spec Omega. This case comes in a range of fantastic colour designs which look superb. It is a bit more expensive than I would perhaps normally go for, but in a build that is this high end, you want to go for something nice. Don't get me wrong, it isn't extreme, it isn't ridiculously expensive, coming in under the $100 mark, and if you do want to save some cash, you can drop down to their spec alpha, which is a little bit cheaper. I personally went for the red and black design, and I've been very, very impressed with it. It's a nice experience in terms of building in, and looks really quite fantastic. Overall, no complaints whatsoever. The final part on today's list is the power supply, the Corsair CX750M. It's perhaps a tad overkill for today's build, but it's priced very affordably. They do do a 600 watt version as well, which you could save some money and drop down to, but at the time of filming, there really wasn't much difference between the two. It's a semi-modular power supply, meaning you only plug in the cables you need, and the 80 plus bronze certification means it's guaranteed and verified by an external company to be running above 80% efficiency at all times and that's tested at 20, 50 and 100% load scenarios. Overall you can't really go wrong with something like this and it's semi-modular in nature, means you only plug in the cables you need, saving you from all this unnecessary cable clutter. But that about wraps it up for today's build, if you did enjoy it, smash that like button and subscribe for more from me. Hit me up on Twitter, it's at Geekwa on Instagram for sneak peeks behind the scenes and glorious, I mean I'm just going to say it, PC pornography. If you enjoyed today's video, you know what to do, and as always, we'll see you in the next Geek What video.